You may be seated. We've come to the part of the service where we observe the Lord's Supper. The purpose of this ordinance is to remember the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. His death is symbolized in the cup which represents his blood and in the bread which represents his body. Jesus died for our sins in order to forgive our sins and to give us eternal life through faith in him. Communion is also a time for examination of ourselves to confess and repent of sin. It would be inappropriate for us to be holding on to sins while celebrating the sacrifice by which Jesus released us from our sins. We're going to be looking at a passage from the Bible. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand and men will put one in your hands. If you do not own a Bible, you are free to keep that as a gift. When you get your Bible, please turn in it to Psalm 130. Psalm 130 is one of 15 psalms entitled Songs of the Ascents. These psalms may have been sung by the Jewish pilgrims as they go annually on their trek three times a year to Jerusalem to worship. Psalm 130 ties together the following ideas. It's the, the truth about man's desperate need, the truth about man's or God's mercy and loving kindness, the truth about his abundant redemption, as well as the theme of waiting on God. Follow along as I read Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness and with him is abundant redemption. He will Redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The psalmist reminds the Lord that in the past he has cried out to him out of the depths. Uh, What are the depths? Often this Hebrew word is used for the depth of the sea as Isaiah uses it when he says that God made the depths into a pathway for his people Israel. At other times, it's used figuratively of a time of distress or danger, as in Psalm 69 and also as in our Psalm 130. Some in our body have been in these kind of depths in the past. Some are in these depths in the present. Listen to Spurgeon's comment on on this. Prayer is never more real and acceptable than when it rises out of the worst places. Deep places beget deep devotion. Next, the psalmist pleads with God to be attentive to his prayer. It's more important that God hears our prayer than that we even receive the answer. If he hears us, we can leave the time and the method of his answering up to him. Next, the psalmist recalls a bigger problem than the depths of the distress that he was in, and that's the depths of his own depravity. He says, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? The expected answer to this question is no one. If God would hold us accountable for our sins, we could not stand before him. We need to remind ourselves of the depth from which Jesus Christ rescued us. We were guilty. We were spiritually dead in our sins. We were unable to do a thing to please God. But God, rich being rich in mercy, made us alive when we were in that dead condition. Our salvation required an act of God. 
The Jewish pilgrims, as they went up to Jerusalem, would offer sacrifices for which would assure them of God's forgiveness. These sacrifices pointed forward to Christ, the Lamb of God. In the Lord's Supper, we look backward to that death on the cross. In him, we have forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The forgiveness of God makes it possible for us to fear God, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Spurgeon says, none fear the Lord like those who have experienced his forgiving love. The fact that God is a forgiving God also gives us reason for hope. I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. You notice that it, it's, this hope is informed by the word of God. Our hope is even better informed by the word of God than was a psalmist. We have hope, we look forward to the return of Jesus Christ. He will bring an end to our present conditions. We've been living in fallen bodies in a fallen world. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying or pain. The psalmist goes from confessing his own hope in the Lord to admonishing others to hope. He says, oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. He gives two strong reasons for hope. With the Lord is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. We do well to not only remember the, the, the depths from which we were saved, but to remember the loving kindness of God and the abundant redemption that he has given us. God chose Israel not on the basis of their loveliness, but because of his love for them. And he redeemed them from the bondage in Egypt and brought them into an abundant land. He predestined us to adoption as, a sons, as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to his kind intention of his will. And the abundance of his redemption to us is shown in the following language. We have redemption through his blood according to the riches of his grace which has been lavished on us. The love which God, uh, God has poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. As you take part of the Lord's Supper, remember the great depths from which Jesus rescued you. Worship the loving and merciful Savior who redeemed you. Turn from any sin as, those that, as befits those who fear the Lord. And set your hope firmly in him who will rescue you from the very presence of sin. You may take the bread and the cup when your heart is prepared. If you have, come, uh, have not come to trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, we ask that you not partake of the bread and the cup, rather let it pass you. We're glad that you're here and we pray that you seriously will consider the claims of Christ. After all, he is God's only way of salvation. And without Jesus, you cannot stand before God. Men, come forward and serve us.